Hello and welcome to Investing Confidential. What is inflation? Why is it important? Should we be scared? I'm going to answer all those questions for you and then give you a reason why you really should be scared, or at least from an investment standpoint, you need to be prepared. So let's start. What is inflation? Uh, look, I'm going, to, I'm going to leave it really simple. Inflation is a rise in prices and decline in purchasing power, meaning, you know, one day you, you're used to paying you know, a dollar for something. Now it's a dollar twenty, and six months later it's a dollar fifty. Okay, that's inflation. And you say to yourself, "Why?" Uh, and you don't understand why. Many people, most people, don't understand about inflation. So let me talk. There, there is there are three aspects of inflation. Okay, there are three parts. There is asset inflation. Okay, these are things are things like real estate. Okay, you can understand real estate price go up. That's asset inflation. Stock prices, stock you know stock prices go up. Inflation, right? Asset inflation. Then you have commodity inflation, where we talk about food and energy, the most important parts of inflation, even though the government likes to take it out. Food and energy, what, you know, how much we pay for food, what is it going to, you know, to, to put gas in our car, heat our house? That's commodity inflation. Then we've got the most important inflation of all, which the government never talks about monetary inflation. This is basically the US government or any government. Okay, let's talk about a global basis printing money. And boy, has our government had a really good time printing money over time. Okay. And this is the, this is the one that nobody's talking about, but this is the one that is the most sticky and the most dangerous of all inflations. And uh, as you can see, I mean, we have had a fun time, you know, going back many, many years, you know, debasing the dollar and essentially why was Bitcoin was created because of this, what you're seeing today, what you're seeing here in this, in this slide here, you know, the, the government, okay, the U S government, and this is both Republicans and Democrats have basically been, you know, printing money on a printing press, taking advantage of the fact that the rest of the world is so screwed up that they're desperate for dollars. Okay. But over time, this doesn't work. And over time, a hundred percent of the time when you print money like this, it equals inflation. Okay? I've been fortunate to travel over the world. I've seen inflation firsthand in places like Brazil, places like Argentina, and other places around the world that went into this, you know, printing money, printing money, over borrowing, debt, debt, and all of a sudden everything blows up. And all of a sudden, the common people have a piece of paper, which is their local currency, which is worthless or worth, you know, 10% of what it was. And this is what's happening today. So originally, let's talk about what 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 is what has happened today or up till today that has caused this problem. And the main problem has been, and you know, for, obviously it's been a problem, but it's also been good. It's been glo what they call globalization. Globalization is this thing you've heard about. It's you know trade trade barriers. Everyone talking to each other. Everyone trading with each other. Goods and services across border. This was good, and global uh, globalization was very good for deflation bringing prices down, okay? We used to manufacture in Ohio and, and Pennsylvania and all these other places. We moved the manufacturing out to Japan, then to China, now to Vietnam and Indonesia, and they pay their workers peanuts, and boom, all of a sudden prices are cheap, cars, everything else is cheaper over time. They stay, there's no inflation, right? Deflation prevents prices going up, and it's the opposite of inflation. Well, let me clue you in. Globalization, for all intents and purposes, is dead. OK, is it globalization was good, but now it's dead, meaning there's 400 There's over 400 trade agreements around the world. I mean, how many more could we have another 400? No, impossible. So everything, all the benefits of globalization, we've we've already appreciated. So we've seen all that already and it's dead. OK, end of story. So we're not going to see any more deflationary benefits of this this globalization. We're going to see the opposite now, people, because all of the you know, a lot, a lot of countries have been hurt by globalization and all of these trade agreements. So we're going to see a reversal. So that's another check check box for inflation going higher. And what is so we talked about what is inflation uh, and then we talk what what is not inflation. Okay, inflation is not transitory. Okay, no matter what you you wonder what Fat Powell says and, and Joe Biden and all the administration said all along, inflation is transitory. It's not transitory. You know what's transitory? Ukraine is transitory because there's a war and this and the war is going to end eventually. 
Uh, stocks, stocks are transitory. Stocks go up, stocks go down. Real estate's transitory. Real estate goes up, real estate goes down. Okay, that's going to have an effect. It's going to have a meaningful effect. But there's so much sticky inflation that inflation is never going to get to the to target or, the, or what we've seen, the, the Fed's target of 2% or what has been the average over the last, you know, 25 years or 30 or 40 years, which is sort of this 2.5%. The problem now is we have monetary inflation. This is very sticky. Money printing, as I showed you before, I'm going to show you again. We've had massive money printing going on. Massive money printing going on. This is some, This is like a time bomb because it doesn't hit right away, but over time, and then all of a sudden it does hit and people don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, boom, the piece of uh, the piece of paper you have, the US dollar or the Brazilian real or one of these other currencies, is not worth what it is before, okay? Uh, and also I think food and energy are also sticky, okay? Despite what you see, the, the manipulation of energy, the energy goes up over time. Food prices go up over time. And given the state of affairs with all of the, the, the nonsense going on internationally, you know, food prices are not going to come plummeting down anytime soon. So let's look at inflation over time. Okay. How long does it take? Once inflation skyrockets like it has been, how long does it take to drop, let's say, 50%? Look, th these are real statistics. This is looking at, you know, over time what has happened in the past with inflation. You know, I'm going to tell you, you know, in, in this chart, it looks like it's going to take between five and seven years. And, and obviously the author, of the people who put this together in these charts say it's going to take longer. But I say it's going to take me five to seven years before inflation drops 50% from the peak. Okay, so let, what does that mean? We peaked out at 8.3 and we're going lower, obviously, because the economy has, has is going down and demand is, is shrinking dramatically all over the world. But in order for inflation to count, let's say 4%, it's going to take five to seven years. Okay, That means that over the next five to seven years, we're going to have double the amount of inflation we've had over the last 25 years on average. That's not good. Okay, that's not good for stocks. I'm sorry to tell you. That is not good for stocks. That is not good for bonds over time. It's not good for the economy. Okay. Well, so what has happened? Why do we think this is not good? Why is this going to have a, a big effects? Because financial assets, as you can see, financial assets have ripped, especially over the last 10 years since the financial crisis. They, they, they bubbled and now they're retreating. Okay. They're bubbled and now they're retreating. And this was a big source of wealth. So again, it's going to have a big effect on the economy. Uh, real estate. I don't want to go into, uh, I've, I've talked about real estate almost every time, every video. Real estate's bubbled, okay, absolutely bubbled. It's now, the bubble's been punctured. It's going down in most of the country. And also is a big key to CPI. So real estate coming down is going to have a, a positive effect for uh, CPI, meaning it's going to lower CPI. But other things are offsetting that, right? Look at energy here. Energy's very easy to manipulate. Okay, we've seen that from the U.S. government with the Strategic Reserve. Look, look what they've done to the inventory. Okay, that's got to be. We, you cannot. We, as a country, we cannot be operating with this kind of inventory. That this is very, very dangerous, and it's going to have to get filled higher. And we've already seen energy prices start to tick higher. Even with, you know, the situation in in in, in Ukraine sort of being at what being at what it is, okay. Another thing, oil auto prices they fall again. These are all in the case of C, this is all like sort of pl uh, you know puff for CPI. Auto prices falling hard. The bubble burst there. So we had a real estate bubble that burst. Auto prices burst. We had energy prices going up. They've been manipulated lower, you know. And this is all positive, okay, but. But, but, what is the Fed looking at, right? So tomorrow the Fed speaks. What is the Fed? the Fed looking at wages? Okay, wage inflation. This is the big variable, folks. This is what nobody's talking about. This is why inflation is going to be around for a while. This is the big variable that we always talk about, sticky inflation. The, look at the Fed wage growth, growth indicator. It's It's gone through the roof. Until that comes down, the Fed is not going to pivot. Okay, no matter what, how desperate you are, and the market is desperate, because you see the rally today. It's it's not going it's not going to pivot anytime soon. Employer, you know, employees 
uh, and employers. There's just a big fight going on. They're trying to hold the line. Employers don't want don't want to raise wages, uh, but it's inevitable. Look at California. Okay, 22 percent minimum wage increase. That is massive. It's almost a hundred percent increase. That is absolutely massive. Um, and look, why is this happening? Look, I, I, you know, you could tell from that I'm a fairly conservative person, but look, the minimum wage is a joke, folks. It, it is a joke. It needs to be adjusted. People cannot live off because of the sticky inflation. And now we have it. You cannot expect anybody to live off the current minimum wage in this country or the, the kind of jobs that are, that are, you know, out there. It's like, right, again, this is why the job numbers are completely fake, okay? There's a million jobs out there because they pay nothing. They pay $8, $10. And you cannot live on that given the current inflation, okay? Look at this statistic. We're in the longest period of history without an increase in wages, okay? People that have made minimum wage over the last decade or so, it's worth 27% less. And if you go back even farther, Okay, the minimum wage today is worth in inflation adjusted terms, and we had big inflation in the 70s, it's 40% less than what people made in 1968. Meaning, you know, you, you probably made, you know, the minimum wage is, I don't know what it was, $2, a dollar, $3. I have no idea what it was, but you could buy more than you could in 1960 than you could today with making $10 an hour. So that, something's got to change, and that's inflationary. This is why inflation is going to be around for a while. Look at look at New York City. Look, I don't understand it, but New York City rents, which New York City is the largest city in the world. It has a big weight in all these indexes. New York City rents are not going down, surprisingly so. I think eventually, but not. So the, the even the indexes, the CPI is going to be adjusted for the fact that New York City is New York City landlords manipulating their rents, not going down. This is going to, again, keep the CPI from plummeting down to where the Fed thinks it's going to go. So what does it all mean? The Fed's going to have to keep raising rates. They know it. Okay. You know, the Fed has no choice. No, no matter how desperate everyone is to see a pivot, Fed's not going to pivot anytime soon. Okay. Th this has been the most aggressive, as you can see here, the most aggressive right, raising of rates in 40 years. But Again, all of these things are shock value, but you got to put this in perspective. And I'm going to give you something to put it in perspective, because remember where we came from. Rates were zero. We have in our in my lifetime, anyways, like we've never seen this before. And let's put this into even a greater perspective. Okay, don't laugh. This is a three thousand years of interest rates, global interest rates. Okay, look at where we were prior to this, prior to 2022. You put this in 3,000 years perspective. Okay, this was unprecedented. This has never happened before in anyone's lifetime that is living today. It's, it's in, it was insane. I'm sorry to say going to zero is insane. It doesn't work. It never works. And so people think, remember, we've only been, we've only had six months of, of rate increases. We haven't seen the effects. So when you look at from a long-term perspective, we're going to be in a rising rate environment for a very, very and I emphasize a very long time. And you've got to adjust as an investor. You've got to adjust. If you're a fixed income investor, you've got to stay short term. Two years, three years, keep rolling because you're going to get higher rates every time. And you're going to make a decent return on the on the fixed income. Not in the not in the 10 year bonds or 30 years, but in the shorter bonds. But in the short term, it's going to be very rough going in the stock market. But there's going to be pockets of opportunity. And we'll discuss those uh, at another time. So as always, investors, be careful out there.